Hi, I'm Bill Rapisi, Executive Director of Lymphatic Education and Research Network, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for joining us today for our symposium series. I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who become members of LEARN and help support this series so that we can continue bringing this kind of groundbreaking information uh, to you in your homes and offices. Uh, I would also suggest for all of you who have not become members of LEARN, $5 a month, you can become a member of LEARN and help support this programming and the research that we do. Thanks very much for joining us and I look forward to having you become a member. Good afternoon and welcome to Debunking the Myths of Exercise and Lymphedema. My name is Nicole Stout and I am a physical therapist and a lymphedema specialist and I'm here this afternoon to talk with you uh, about exercise and lymphedema. I'm grateful to the Lymphatic Education and Research Network for giving me this opportunity to talk with you all and we'll spend the next hour having some interesting and exciting discussion around exercise and lymphedema. My background is as a physical therapist and a clinical researcher. I've been in the field of lymphedema since 1997, conducting research and clinical trials and patient care. I've done that through a number of different health systems around the country. I'm currently an active member of several boards, including the National Lymphedema Network Board of Directors and the American Lymphedema Framework Project. So let's talk about our objectives for today. My goal is to get through the next 30 to 40 minutes helping you to better understand the evidence regarding exercise for individuals who have lymphedema. There's a lot of information on Google, Dr. Google as I like to refer to him. There's a lot of information that your medical providers may have given you and there may even be a lot that you haven't received. So we want to talk about the evidence, the research that's been done, and help you better understand how that is important to you. I also want to clearly describe for you what we know and what we don't know about exercise and risk with lymphedema. And I certainly want to have plenty of time for your questions and any concerns that you have to be addressed. As I said, when we complete the presentation, you will see the interface in front of you on the right side of your screen there's a box that you can type into. I will be monitoring and responding to those questions after we complete the session. And we'll do that in a live broadcast, so you'll see me at that time. The other thing I want to reassure you, if we run out of time, I don't want to neglect your questions, and so I'm happy to provide written answers to you through LEARN. We can post those on the website or we can circulate those via an email or a, a chat blog or some sort of, uh, of communication. Um, but I'll work with the LEARN folks to make sure that we address all of the questions that you all put forward because I think this is an important topic. One of the most important things we want folks to recognize is that exercise is good. What will we not talk about today? This is important. We will not discuss whether exercise should or shouldn't be done. It absolutely should be in some form or another. There are so many known benefits of exercise to your health, to your well-being, to your psychological status, in addition to how it may impact your lymphedema. So exercise should be a part of healthy lifestyle behaviors. We will not talk about post-operative exercises. If you have issues or concerns regarding post-operative exercises, you should talk with your physician, your surgeon, or your therapist about the appropriate course of exercise for you to take in the post-operative stages. We will also not discuss specific recommendations for an exercise program for you. As we talk about exercise today, you'll come to learn one of the most important things about an exercise program is that it is individualized based on your condition and your status and your preferences. If you have specific exercise questions about what exercise is best for you to perform, again, talking with and discussing with your therapist, your physical or occupational therapist, an exercise specialist in cancer or lymphedema, or your physician is a great avenue for you to take to identify specific exercise recommendations for you. So, let me give you a little bit of a historical perspective. Here we are in 2015, almost 2016, 
And what we have seen over the last decade and a half is an explosion in the evidence that supports the benefits of exercise for individuals with lymphedema or individuals who are at risk of developing lymphedema. In the mid-1990s, lymphedema therapies were just beginning to gain traction in the United States. Some of the most robust multimodal programs for treating and managing lymphedema had been present in Europe and in Australia for decades but those hadn't quite made the leap over the pond to the United States. And in the mid early 1990s to mid 1990s, we started to see the emergence of multimodal rehabilitation clinics focusing specifically on lymphedema in the United States. The American Cancer Society recognized this emergence and they recognized the relevance that this has to the cancer population. And so in a watershed event, the American Cancer Society published a full supplement to the journal Cancer in 1998 that specifically focused on lymphedema. It included 19 articles and four reports, and these are available for your reference. They're open access and free on the American Cancer Society's website. However, if we look back in 1998 on what the state of the evidence told us about exercise, there was very, very little. In fact, the evidence on exercise did not even rise to the level of a full article. There was one article within the supplement that had reference to exercise, and they discussed the treatment options uh, and review of exercise as a part of a multimodal treatment intervention in managing lymphedema. There were four paragraphs dedicated to exercise. So why am I explaining that to you? Well, we didn't know a lot about exercise at the time, and in fact, the common myth at the time was that exercise could be dangerous and was likely harmful to people who had lymphedema. So let's fast forward now, a, a little over a, a decade, to 2006. Um, there were some pivotal changes that we saw begin to emerge in the early 2000s around the, the gestalt or the, the thoughts around exercise. First of all, a number of researchers in the field of cancer were struggling to conduct exercise research. They were having to exclude patients because they had lymphedema. The Safety review boards for a number of exercise studies said that it was not safe for patients with lymphedema to participate in exercise trials. A study group at the University of Minnesota challenged this and they said, wait a second, there's not a lot of evidence around this exercise and lymphedema and exercise being dangerous. We don't know. We're concerned, but we're uncertain. And in the absence of evidence, we need to study it and we need to better learn. And so one of the first articles that was published in 2006, which undertook a, an exercise uh, clinical trial that looked at weight training and, in, and lymphedema in breast cancer survivors. This was a randomized trial where patients underwent twice a week weight training over a period of six months. So this wasn't just any exercise. This was resistive weight training exercise. Really, this study was done to determine whether or not exercise was safe. So the endpoints that the researchers looked at was, did the exercise with weight training make lymphedema worse? Did it result in exacerbations of symptoms, or did it bring on symptoms consistent with an exacerbation or worsening of lymphedema? And what they found was that it did not. It did not increase lymphedema in this population, and it did not increase the symptoms that patients report associated with lymphedema, like heaviness and achiness in the limb. Subsequent to that, over the course of the next few years, a number of studies were published. Probably one of the most important, a, a series of articles in 2009, 2008 and 9, um, by Dr. Schmitz and her colleagues at the University of Penn, looked at weightlifting in women with specifically breast cancer. These studies were published, one in the New England Journal of Medicine and one in the Journal of the American Medical Association, two very, very esteemed journals. Dr. Schmitz's work was novel in that she took that exercise intervention twice weekly 
progressive weightlifting and compared that group to a group of women with breast cancer and lymphedema who did not do weightlifting. And what she found was that the weightlifting group actually improved their symptoms with lymphedema. They demonstrated improvements in their strength and in their upper and lower body. And they actually had less exacerbations over the period of the study than the women who did not do weightlifting. So there were no volume experiences, increased volume experiences, and there were no adverse effects in the group of patients who lifted weights that was significantly different than the women who did not. So the positive consequences of this work were very positive, and in fact significantly positive for the group of women who did the weight training. The negative consequences were not any different between the two groups. So what does this mean to you? Well, first of all, let's start out with a couple of definitions. There's a difference between exercise and physical activity. We hear those terms used interchangeably sometimes. Uh, we may hear them and not know exactly what they mean. Or we may think we're doing one when we're really doing the other. So what is exercise? Exercise is an activity that requires physical effort or exertion carried out specifically to sustain or improve your health or fitness. So there is a physiological response with exercise that is desired. We want you to increase your heart rate. We want you to increase your blood flow and your respiratory rate. Physical activity is defined as any bodily movement that, produce, that is produced by skeletal muscles that requires energy expenditure. So anytime you are moving, doing activity, this is considered physical activity. So how do we differentiate between the two? Well, if I go to work every day and I leave my house and I walk two blocks to get onto the subway, I get to my office and I walk up three flights of stairs to get to my, uh, my corridor and I sit down at my desk and do work. I have done physical activity that got me to work. It involved walking, it involved going up and down stairs. When I finish my work day, I go to the gym and I get on the treadmill and I go for 25 to 30 minutes and my heart rate goes up. That is an exercise program. So the movement, moving around, the things that we do as a part of our normal activities of daily living contribute to us performing physical activity. When we go above and beyond that set point, that's when we are exercising. Exercise is a targeted intervention specifically designed to increase our heart rate and have specific physiological responses in the body. So let's go back to the research. Exercise, what does this mean to you? If you are exercising and you have lymphedema, you have to remember that these studies showed positive gains and benefits for the individuals who lifted weights who had lymphedema. Now, we have to remember that these studies were done under a controlled environment of a research study. That means the patients were screened to make sure that their lymphedema was stable when they came into the study. All of the patients who participated in the weightlifting exercise regimen had compression garments. So what we found was that exercise, when lymphedema is controlled and a compression garment is used, does not increase your risk of swelling, exacerbations of your lymphedema more than if you don't exercise. So as we know, anyone who has lymphedema, if you're not caring for your limb, there is a risk that it may get worse if we don't wear garments on a routine basis, if we don't take good care of our limb, there's a risk of the swelling getting worse. If we exercise, exercise does not unduly make our swelling worse if we can control the situation with garments and a controlled state of lymphedema. All of the patients in these studies wore garments, which is an important consideration. Now, so we say, well, weightlifting, that's great, Nicole, but I'm not so much into weightlifting. I like to go for a bike ride. I like to swim. Uh, and so another researcher in Australia later looked at exercise and secondary lymphedema. She compared aerobic exercise, which is riding your bike, taking a, a jog, to the resistance exercise over a course of a 12-week period two different study groups, and also monitored their regular activity levels. 
And what she found was that volume measures did not differ between the two groups. So groups who performed aerobic exercise or groups who performed resistance exercise had benefits associated with an exercise program that did not negatively impact their lymphedema. So, what does that mean to you as far as exercise? Well, what is aerobic exercise? Again, the definitions are important. Aerobic exercise is an aerobic response. Your body has to use a lot of oxygen to do the exercise or activity. And you can see some examples that I've provided for you here. Biking, aerobics classes, dance classes, kickboxing classes. There are classes for everything these days getting on the treadmill, getting on the elliptical. Those are all forms of aerobic exercise. Resistance exercise are things like lifting weights, moving your body against resistance. So you can see lifting weights moves your body parts, your joints, your muscles move against a resistive weight. Doing a push-up moves your body weight, so you're moving against a resistance. Now, resistive training. Deborah Corner is a woman who undertook some pretty significant resistive training. She is a patient who has lower extremity lymphedema. So we look at these studies and we say, great, I can exercise and it's good for me. How much is too much? Uh, Ms. Corner is a CrossFit champion, national CrossFit champion. And as you see her exercising here, she's doing some pretty significant weightlifting. She's doing some pretty intense activities in resistive training. But what do you see on her limbs? You see those compression garments. She did a number of interviews around the, the CrossFit Championships and the Olympics and identified that she still works diligently to keep her lymphedema under control by bandaging 8 to 12 hours before her activity in order to keep her limb in optimal shape and then wearing compression garments during her activities. So that is an example of lymphedema in a controlled state with compression garments, exercise and resistive exercise being a very positive impact on our patient. Recently, a systematic review was conducted in the contemporary literature. Well, what does that mean? A systematic review means that when there's a lot of evidence or a lot of different articles in the literature that talk about a topic, we bring together a group of experts to review all of those articles and tell us which articles are the best and give us the best information about the outcomes around that specific topic. So exercise in patients with lymphedema was a systematic review that was conducted by a group involved with the American Lymphedema Framework Project and published in 2011. A systematic review takes all of the articles that it can find that are relevant to exercise in lymphedema that have been conducted in a clinical trial setting and it looks at those in aggregate and it determines overarching high-level results. The results of those, that systematic review showed us both aerobic and resistive exercise are safe for patients with lymphedema. So whether you're choosing to ride your bike, whether you're choosing to lift weights, those are safe exercise interventions for you. Remembering, however, that lymphedema is controlled and your compression garments are in place. Second, they found slow progressive exercise is not associated with the development or the exacerbation of breast cancer related lymphedema and can be safely pursued with proper supervision. So why breast cancer related lymphedema? Well, quite simply, most of the literature that's been done in exercise and lymphedema has been done in that particular population. So there was enough evidence for this group to review the literature and say, progressive exercise is not associated with the development or exacerbation of lymphedema. That's important because we know as we exercise, our body begins to adapt. We get a little healthier we tolerate the exercise a little bit more. And in order for us to continue to achieve gains from exercise, we have to progress the exercise program. So the evidence supports that a progressive exercise program can be done with proper supervision uh, and is not detrimental to lymphedema. 
combined aerobic and resistance exercise appears to be safe for patients with lymphedema. So this systematic review confirmed what those earlier studies that we have highlighted talked to us about. Exercise is safe when we do it under the right circumstances and, and with the right controls in place. Now, what does that mean? Well, what do I need to know then about my risk and how do I control my risk? Well, the first step is to be aware of the risks that exist and to take steps to reduce your harm. If you're going to go for the piece of cheese, you've got to have the helmet on because you have a sense that that little uh, mousetrap is going to come down on you hard. So if you're going to go for it, make sure that you are aware of the risks that are individually important to you. So let's talk a little bit about risk with exercise and activity. Exercise, even though we said exercise and physical activity are different things, sometimes when we do physical activities, we do them to a greater extent and they become an exercise. Our body has an exercise response. Our heart rate goes up. Our muscles become strained. And so we have to be aware of activities that take us above our daily set point because those can introduce risk. Risk is introduced when we go into an activity and we're not prepared. If we are not in our compression garment, if we are not in adequate physical shape to do an activity, our limb is at risk for swelling if we strain or if we overuse. So we need to be aware. Watch out for activities that take you above your daily set point. Things like seasonal activities, spring cleaning. You may clean your house on a weekly basis. Maybe it's a daily basis. But there are times throughout the year where you may do episodic cleaning that is much more significant. You take down the curtains, uh, you take up the rugs, you do a lot of different work, and that can be an exertion, an overexertion, that puts your limb at risk for developing or exacerbating your lymphedema. The first snowfall of the year, this is another place where there is risk. An activity that you may be able to do, shoveling the snow, but the first snowfall of the year, I'm going to assume it's probably been six to nine months since you last shoveled snow. And so this activity can take you far above and beyond what your body is usually capable and able of handling as far as a load, and then it puts you at risk. Other episodic activities, things like moving, uh, things like your first day out in the garden, pulling weeds, it's so easy to think of those as daily routine tasks that we would do, but when we take those daily routine tasks to a significantly higher level, we run the risk of exacerbating the condition because that strain on our muscles, that strain on our system can mimic exercise. And if we're unprotected with our garments, if we're unprotected with the state of our, our lymphedema, it puts us at risk for exacerbations of the condition. So, what are some of the risks that you need to think about? Being unprepared for an activity or a task. Making sure if you are going to take on an activity, whether it's exercise, whether it's moving furniture, make sure you have your compression garment on. Stop and ask yourself, where is the garment? Am I prepared to take on this task or this activity? How many times do we go to lift up a box or a piece of furniture and we find that it's a lot heavier than what we expected? That's a risk that, that's a risk period for us. So how heavy is the box? Know what your risk is. Put on the compression sleeve or stocking and make sure you mitigate the risk. When was the last time you were at the gym? If you're unprepared for an activity or task, maybe you routinely worked out for a period of two or three months and then you fell off the wagon. It happens very frequently. And suddenly you're motivated to return to the gym six months later. Make sure that you scale back the exercise and the activity that you take on, making sure your lymphedema is controlled with a compression garment and that you're aware of the equipment that you're using. We also run into risk when we're not real, we don't really know what we're doing. Um, there's sometimes there's new equipment at the gym, there's an awkward shaped piece of furniture that we want to, to move. There are these little risks that make us step back and have to say, 
you know, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Let me pause and let me rethink this so I can do it in a safe manner. You also want to make sure that from time to time you follow up with your therapist or your physician. They can help you to keep lymphedema in check by doing measurements, checking in with you about your exercise program, checking in with you about your ongoing maintenance that you're undertaking to make sure that things really are in check. It's easy for us to get three or four months down the line. We have compression garments. We're doing a good job of bandaging at night. Um, and our limb maybe just slowly creeps up on us. I see the therapist and the therapist says, you know, your leg is a little bit bigger by about 20%. So let's take a look at how we can reduce the, the volume that you've accumulated. So understand where you are in the trajectory of your limb, trajectory of your limb swelling. Are you in a good place or not before you start into an exercise program or take on additional risk? So exercise precautions to bring this all together. Exercise, as we said, is definitely good. Protect your limb, though, during your exercise. Wear a garment. Uh, and remember that activities are many times exercise. So wear your garment. If you have to strain to do an activity, you're probably doing too much. If you reach down to pick up that box and you can't do it the first time and you have to bear down and strain to lift it, it's probably a little bit too heavy for you. So realign, uh, unload the box, and go back to what you were doing. Watch out for any onset of pain that worsens with exercise. If your limb becomes achy or throbbing during exercise, your limb is telling you a story. It's telling you that you're doing too much. Take a step back from what you're doing. It is normal for you to experience some level of muscle soreness after you exercise. You feel that in both arms or legs. You feel that in your body after you do an exercise program. However, if that discomfort, soreness, or pain persists in your affected limb longer than it does in your other limb, um, you may want to contact your therapist or your doctor to help them assess your limb, but also have them help you uh, reevaluate your exercise program and maybe make changes. Hydrate well both before, during, and after your exercise program. Some general guidelines that we can give you regarding exercise. We said that progressive exercise is good, um, but what does that mean if I want to progress my program? We said that weightlifting is good or aerobic exercise is good, but where do I start? Consult Consulting with a physical therapist or an occupational therapist or an exercise professional can help you to better understand what is the right point for you to start. My motto is usually to tell patients, start low and go slow. Start at a weight that is not something that's straining you. Start at a resistance level or a distance or a time that's not overly exerting to you. And slowly progress yourself so that you can progress and feel like you are advancing your exercise but not straining yourself as you go. Warming up and cooling down, warming up before you exercise, about one to two minutes of stretching or gentle movement, help to get the blood flowing into your muscles, get your joints lubricated so that you can begin the exercise program with little risk. Work to maintain a smooth cadence through the exercise program. Jerky movements, straining movements, abrupt movements can be, can be somewhat dangerous to your limb. Deep breathing is an important consideration. We all know how important deep breathing is in our lymphedema therapy regimens and routines. Exercise, as we exercise, deep breathing has additional benefits in helping us move lymph throughout the body. If you overdo it, soreness, as we said, that persists for more than a day after you exercise may be an indication that you did a bit too much. Um, step back from the exercise program or the activity. The next time you undertake the activity, recognize that you want to do a little bit less, maybe a little bit less weight or resistance or a little less time. If you notice an increase in the swelling in your limb after you exercise, it may have been a bit of overexertion. 
you may have a bit of uh, ill-fitting garments and so you may want to check with your therapist to make sure your limb is in good shape and well controlled and that your garments are in fact uh, in good order. So myths in lymphedema management and I hope some of these uh, these myths still circulate out there. It's unfortunate, but since the late 1990s till today, um, I still hear patients from time to time tell me that their doctor told them don't lift more than five pounds for the rest of their life. So hopefully after today, you can take that and throw that out the window because we know that that is not correct. We know that exercise and weightlifting is okay under the right circumstances. We know that a set amount of five pounds may be right for someone, but may not be right for everyone. It has to be an individualized approach. We shouldn't, we shouldn't engender fear in our patients. Uh, there's almost never a time when I've told patients, you shouldn't do this exercise, you shouldn't do any exercise. I've had patients ask me, can I jump out of an airplane with a parachute? Yes. They've asked me, can I go rock climbing? Can I go kayaking? Can I go jet skiing? Can I get to back to golf? Can I do aerobics? The answer to every one of those questions is yes, but we need to make sure we get you in the right condition and we ramp you up into that exercise activity so that your body is prepared for it. Your muscles have to get in shape, but your lymphatic system has to get in shape too. We also want to make sure that you take those exercises on under the right circumstances. Your edema is well controlled and your compression garment is in place. Myth number two, exercise will overload your lymphatic system and cause the swelling to get worse, so avoid it. Exercise does cause a response in your lymphatic system. It may cause an overload in your lymphatic system if it's not done safely. It may cause swelling if it's not done safely. And so when we exercise, we must take the precaution of making sure that we protect the limb. So it doesn't mean we should avoid exercise. It means we should undertake exercise in a controlled fashion and perhaps with some oversight and supervision from a professional to help us get off on the right foot. You may need to look for a job so that you're not on your feet so much. I've heard this from a number of patients who were concerned about going back to work or their employers were concerned about them coming back to work. Um, there are ways to condition yourself with activity so that you can tolerate being on your feet for a good period of the day. There are strategies to maintain your limb using compression garments. Um, so in essence, what I'm saying is everything needs to be done in consideration for you and your particular state. How much should you exercise? How frequently? Uh, what types of exercise and activity should you do? All of those things need to be individualized for you. And that can be prescribed or it can be created, your program can be created in consultation with a knowledgeable therapist or exercise professional. So in summary, exercise is recommended for a healthy lifestyle for individuals with lymphedema. And I hope that I was able to impress that upon you today. It is safe and effective for individuals with lymphedema to exercise, but appropriate caution must be taken. And you will have access to the slides, so there are a number of the studies that I've referenced for you. And I'm now going to switch over so that we can have some discussion and hopefully, I'm hopeful, that many of you have questions that you're going to post. Um, so I'm going to start through and scroll through the question list here. Um, are there any particular exercises that are better than others for people with lymphedema? Um, and this is, a, this is a great question, and we hear this all the time. Are there lymphedema-specific exercises? And the answer is there are not. Um, the good thing is uh, you can choose an exercise that you like, an exercise that you're interested in doing, or activities that you enjoy, and you can utilize that as your exercise program or your exercise intervention. Um, there is some evidence that exercise with resistance, with weight training, or some of the resistive exercises we showed you, there's some evidence to suggest that those types of exercise 
uh, increase lean muscle mass and may help to diminish limb volume, but that, that research is not definitive. So resistive training may have an impact on limb volume. The jury is still out on that, uh, but any type of exercise. So there's not a specific lymphedema exercise. We didn't get to talk much about swimming, but what a great place for you to exercise. You can be a little freer in the pool because you don't have to wear a compression garment. Uh, and the water provides a bit of hydrostatic pressure to support your limb and help with fluid evacuation. So not necessarily are there particular exercises that are better for people with lymphedema than others, uh, but there are certainly ways that you can go about exercise to make any activity or exercise be appropriate for you. Uh, are there any clinical studies looking at exercise and using a pneumatic pump afterwards? Um, interest, this is an interesting question. Uh, not exercise in the context that we have been speaking of it as aerobic exercise or um, resistive conditioning exercise. There are studies that have looked at clinical interventions around complete decongestive therapy using remedial exercises. Remedial exercises are just movement-based exercises uh, utilizing pneumatic compression pumps. But I, I don't think that's what you're asking. I think you're looking at uh, exercise followed by pneumatic compression pumps to demonstrate if there's an improvement in limb volume after the exercise. And I am not aware of, uh, of those uh, of studies that exist in, in that specific line. Uh, bruising, what effect does it have? I use arnica oil and some light exposure to help prevent inflammation a week into healing. Uh, placebo. <laughs> you know, sometimes, Bobby, I always say, um, if it works for me here, then it works, right? Uh, so don't discount the importance of a placebo. Uh, but, so there's some, let's talk through that a bit, right? Bruising is, what is bruising? Bruising means that you've had an injury to your soft tissue and you've had a little bit of bleeding in the tissue. So an injury and internal bleeding like that cause a bruise to happen. Inflammation is associated with all of that. Um, and inflammation is something that your body needs to heal, right? The problem is when you inflame and you have a, an existing condition of lymphedema, so when you bruise on your lymphedematous limb, there is inflammation, and if it's severe enough, it can cause an exacerbation of the swelling. Uh, but managing that bruise, making sure that it doesn't cause undue exacerbation of the, of the edema, um, really is about managing the limb. So making sure you have your compression garment on. Um, I think if you're using ar Arnica oil, you may be rubbing it over the tissue. That gentle massaging mimics manual lymph drainage perhaps and can help with the uptake of fluid to prevent the swelling. Um, so I'm not certain at all about light exposure. I, I don't know of the evidence there around reduced inflammation. I do. I am aware of the uh, low-level light laser therapies that have been used uh, around reducing lymphedema, but I am not certain about light exposure to prevent inflammation around the bruising. Um, the best we can do if we do injure our limbs, the best we can do is work to mitigate the swelling that will happen. Uh, when there's trauma or injury, there will be swelling, and we can wear compression bandages, wear our garments, make sure that we are keeping our joints moving, perhaps do some self-manual lymphatic drainage to help to mitigate that edema in the limb. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I see. Uh, stay tuned. Nicole has, we're having some technical difficulties. I think we've overcome that. Um, I was a marathon runner before diagnosis, so in really good shape, but workouts still very intensively still, six days a week, but the leg does affect me as far as being heavy during exercise. Well, Melanie, so here, here, and Melanie's asking, is, am I doing too much? Is that too much? You know, my perspective on that is if um, you're, you're going to have some residual heaviness, um, you're going to have some aching in the muscles when you exercise, especially at the level of intensity that you're exercising. Um, but it also seems as though you know your limb, and uh, I think that's the most important thing. When we put out 
these statements like don't lift more than five pounds for the rest of your life or don't lift heavy weights. Uh, we don't do our patients the service of educating them as to how they can exercise safely and learn what it means to exercise safely for your limb. Um, if I give a patient uh, an exercise program and they go home and do it and they come back to me in, in, in a few months and say, well, not only did I do that exercise, I added on to my program and I'm now doing exponentially more. That's great. You've learned your limb. So, Melanie, you're saying that your leg does feel heavy uh, during exercise. That, that makes sense, right? You are increasing uh, muscle activity. You're increasing blood flow to the limb which in turn increases lymph load. And so your limb is already impaired at managing lymph load, and so you're overloading it a little bit with the exercise. Um, the question is, does that detrimentally impact your limb volume? And if you have good management strategies, exercise with your garments on, um, perhaps use your um, compression bandages or pneumatic compression after the exercise, um, you're able to keep the limb in good shape. So there are fluctuations. Lymphedema is dynamic in your limb and exercise and activity is going to cause that to increase and decrease just slightly. If you're, the key is you want to be able to manage the condition and you have a number of tools that can help you to do that. So learning your limb and knowing what's right for you uh, and, and if you know the limb gets heavy during exercise but it's still in check, well okay, as long as that soreness, that heaviness doesn't persist or it doesn't get worse or the swelling doesn't get worse, I'd say you're right in that realm of where you should be with exercising, doing the things you love to do and maintaining your limb. Uh, let's see, I have lower extremity secondary lymphedema. I was told that my rest period should be twice as long as my activity time. Example, walk for 20 minutes and rest for 40 minutes. True or false? Uh, I would say that's not an absolute. Um, if you are, uh, and again, you're talking about activity, uh, but if you are in uh, relatively good shape. If you're used to walking um, 20 minutes, if you don't have any uh, residual swelling, heaviness, aching in the limb, if it doesn't cause your limb to exacerbate, um, movement and continuing to move is a good thing. Um, I, I don't know that there's a specific uh, recommendation or a specific um, equation um, rest twice as long as you walk. I think that may be a myth. So I'm not going to say false, but I'm going to say probably not. Um, you want to give yourself adequate recovery time if you do an exercise or an activity. If you walk up the stairs and you feel winded or your leg feels sore, give yourself a break for a minute and then keep walking. You don't want to walk through uh, or continue to exercise through pain. That's an important point. This is not a no pain, no gain phenomenon. So make sure that if you walk those 20 minutes and you feel good, there's not really a reason to stop and necessarily time yourself to rest for half of that time. Do what makes sense and what feels right to you. Let's see. Um, I've got primary since birth in both legs and have done a number of triathlons. I love this group. You guys are awesome. Triathlons and marathons and century bike rides to regain, century bike ride, I'm assuming that's a 100 mile bike ride. My goodness. To regain my health after cancer treatment. That is fantastic. That was Adrian responding to Melanie. Um, and and it, obviously you all are, um, the two of you are in excellent shape. Um, and you've learned how to best manage your condition and balance that with doing the things you want to do and, and really even challenging yourself to a high degree. So I would say Adrian and Melanie are great examples, triathlons and marathons, um, and great testaments to the fact that, um, that there's not an exercise that's out of your reach. It's just a matter of conditioning yourself and training safely to get into shape to be able to do those exercises and activities. Uh, let's see. Seems like only physical exercises I can't perform with my lower limb lymphedema are things like tennis, racquetball, or the like, which require jerky movements of the feet, ankle swells with garments on. 
Yeah, so Paul, that's Paul's comment about um, physical exercise. And one of the things we said throughout the talk was um, things jerking kinds of exercises, abrupt movements, can sometimes be a little bit dangerous and, and cause us to strain. Um, the interesting thing is, though, that you cite that the ankle swells with your garment on. Your ankle's really a weak spot. The thing about your ankle is you don't have any muscle around your ankle. Nobody does. It's just how we're built anatomically. Um, the problem with that is when you're exercising, your muscles are contracting, and that muscle contraction is helping to keep fluid moving and circulating and, in, in a sense, evacuating from your body. So your muscles, you don't have muscles around your ankles, and so that's kind of a weak spot. It's a place where fluid can easily accumulate, and you're saying that that happens even with the garment on. Um, so some strategies for that might be uh, you could wear the garment and put a bit of an additional compression wrap over top around your ankle. Um, I guess I, I would say it's, it's not a, a problem if you're able to control that edema. Because boy, if you like to play tennis or racquetball, I'd love to be able to ha see you keep doing those things and not have to stop. But if the ankle swells and it becomes persistent and it's difficult to control, um, you may want to consider some alternatives to adding additional compression, like maybe an extra wrap uh, over top of the garment. That's a strategy to try. The other thing I would ask is, you know, is it painful when you're playing? Uh, is, it, is it uncomfortable? Because if it is, you know, you're, you're inciting that swelling and you're causing inflammation and that may exacerbate. Uh, but if the ankle swells a bit during an activity or an exercise, I would expect that to happen. The question is, does it go back? Do you have the tools and the strategies to get it to go back to normal afterwards? Uh, and if you do, then you know you can perform the exercise. You just need to take the appropriate steps to make sure you manage it in the aftermath. So let's see, I think that is... I think I have gotten all of the questions that you have on here. Um, well, I'm very appreciative of your time and your participation. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, I am certainly available. If you have questions, you can filter those through the site here, and Learn can help to get those to me. And uh, we could post those if we need to on the site. Um, but otherwise, I appreciate your time, and thank you so much. I hope you have a great day, and certainly continue to follow the education series here. Uh, a number of excellent programs coming up. Thanks so much, and have a great day.